have a look at this and I can see four terms, right? So someone has expanded and they've got these four objects out. So we're going to try and reverse engineer and try, try and see if there are bits that we can pull out, factorize out, and end up with something nice and all bracketed, okay? So when you see four, a common thing to do is pair them. When you pair them, these early examples are nicely ordered for you. So you can see the first two go together and the last two go together. This won't always be the case. We could really easily jumble these up and they might not just sit next to each other, but what we're about to do will still be the same. First two terms. What do you see in common? 2w here, 2w here. They only differ by the h and the k. So I'm going to factorize out the 2w, which leaves me with the h plus the k. Note the sign, that's important. You've dealt with the first pair, that's good. One of the ways you'll know that you've done this right is that when you go to your second pair, you very likely will see something similar. What's in common? I can see there's a minus 3u here and a minus 3u there. Right? Again, remember, watch out for the sign. So I'm going to take minus 3u out of each of them. What does it leave me with just for this one? I'm going to say positive h, because look, you took away the negative, it's gone now. What about here? Plus k, very good. And this was that sort of like, oh good, I'm on the right track, because we're going to craft questions for you that will often end up with these nice neat results, just to see if you can recognize them. Now here's the thing. You've done one step of factorization, but there's more to go. Remember how we said, oh, these both have a 2w on them. These both have a minus 3u on them. These both also have something in common, namely h plus k. So I'm going to take that out as well. See that? It's in common just like the two w's were in common, just like the minus three u's were in common. It's big and it's awkward, but it's a number. h is a number, k is a number, so you add it together. Algebra just looks harder, but it isn't. When we take out the h plus k, what does it leave you with here? And, watch out for the sign, now you know you're done. Okay. Is there anything else we could possibly do? I think it looks fine. I think it looks fine. However, underneath here, and if you've got another, uh, if you've got another color, what I want you to do is imagine, I'm going to change the question ever so slightly. Imagine instead of this line that we've got here, we had a totally different question and we ended up with this. Can you write this for me? Okay. So suppose instead of 2w, we'd taken out an a squared. And instead of a minus 3u, we'd taken out a minus b squared. Now I can work on this line just like I did to this. The common factor between these two is h plus k. So I'm going to write that out the front. Like so. When I factorize that out, divide both terms through, what does it leave me on the other pair of brackets? Now in this case, in my made up question, unlike in the original, I can go further. And this is the thing you have to ask with factorization. There's many steps to it. How far can I push this? Is there anything else I can squeeze out of it? You can squeeze something else out of this. Namely, this thing here. It's difference of two squares again, right? So that means I can factor it one more step, okay? The h plus k, they're just going to hang out the front. You don't need to do anything else to that. But this guy, you can write factorized even further. Okay, does that make sense? So this is a minus b, a plus b. Okay, so this goes back all the way. Why is a great question? Why is a great question? I'll answer that in about 60 seconds. This goes all the way back to in year seven when we gave you numbers like this and said, can you factorize? And you would say, oh yeah, that's cool, I can do that. It's like three times eight. But then I post, you'd post the question, right? Oh, can I go any further? You can't go any further with this, three is prime, but you can go further with this, right? What would you get out of this? Two and four? Can I go any further? Yeah. 
Yeah, very good. Yeah, very good. Yeah, very good. So there's the factorization. Now, just the same way, you can do it here. Jacob. Now, I got asked the question, why? Why would we do this? Okay, let me really quickly show you. This at the moment is an expression, this top line. How do I know it's an expression? What makes it an expression? It's got no equal sign, right? It's not equal to anything, it's just a bunch of numbers in algebra. Okay? However, if it were an equation with an equal sign on it, <coughs> then naturally the thing you tend to do with equations is try to solve them, right? Well, if you want to solve something, factorized forms are hundreds of times easier to solve than non-factorized forms, right? If all you've got is this up here, you're just stuck just trying numbers out randomly and seeing you know, what will make this equal to zero. But if it's factorized, and we're about two lessons away from this, when it's, it's factorized, solving it, like it literally tells you what the solutions are once you're in this factorized form, okay? So that's why we're flexing these muscles so that when we get there, we're like, oh, it's cool, I've got this skill under my belt, factorizing is easy, I'm good at it, now I'm gonna start solving. 